Robert Breck, and I'm located in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and I have been since I started my career uh, 27 years ago, and I'm primarily an architectural, interior, hospitality, some lifestyle photographer, mostly, I like to say, buildings and rooms, and that takes me all over the country nationally, and as it also affords me opportunities to travel internationally. Pretty reliably every day you're challenged with some kind of lighting mix on the interiors that requires problem solving. The first thing I do to solve these problems with interior lighting is to look around and see what my light sources might be. With a color light meter I can determine them more accurately than I can by the eye. I must admit that over so many years of experience you get a good idea where they are, but it's best in my experience to validate them. And so I use a color meter to evaluate the light sources and the and the mixes of light that I have in a situation so that I know whether or not I need to make color corrections and how I'm going to handle that as a final product. When we're talking about the differences between indoor and outdoor photography, we find that the difficulty probably is compounded by the multiple light sources that you are in are challenged by in interior photography. That's not to say that there aren't challenges with exterior photography, particularly at dusk and dawn shots, that transitional time of day when light sources that are in parking lots or outside of buildings or coming through windows present a challenge. It's a rare situation where I will take a photograph with just available light, although I do, and I am like to think that when you look at the body of work that I've created, that adding light in ways that do not become overly obvious, but emphasize aspects of the interior design or what I'm after. There are occasions when I subtract light from a situation, and I may use um, various blackout cloths or uh, block light sources, either with doors or mostly with felt. Uh, to modify the, either create more drama, create a graphic, more graphic image, and, or just to eliminate a particularly bad source of light and then add my own back in its place. By bad source of light, I mean something that is going to be much more difficult to correct when the subtleties of blended light become difficult to correct in Photoshop. When solving problems of interiors with large windows that bring in enormous amounts of daylight and I want to see the views beyond, I generally try to blend them together by bringing the interior light up somewhat and then try to further blend them together using Photoshop to bring the, the exterior exposure into the shot. The most critical aspect of that problem is flare on mullions, especially if the large windows have a number of mullions. They need, they will flare out and it becomes difficult to add it in. So you need to add light, maybe on separate exposures that will give you enough interior light on the mullion so that you then can blend that exposure back into the final shot. The biggest difficulties are, are really harsh daylight coming in through big windows that may be radically different than the interior light and the transition from one side of a room to another uh, goes from the daylight exposure to a let's say practical light or the tungsten light that may be in the room or a fluorescent light that may be in the room and blending those together. We generally measure all the situations in front of us and then try to figure out what combination of tools we're going to use to, to solve the problem. But that's pretty challenging when the windows are extremely bright and you've got some pretty dark interior spaces. I mean, the contrast levels are extreme and it takes a lot of juggling to, to make a final successful image. When we're trying to solve a lot of these problems and the intricacies of lighting, we find that more and more people are relying on Photoshop to save them in every situation. 
I, I mean, I totally respect Photoshop. I think it's a great program. I think there's millions of things you can do with it. But understanding how color blending and cross lighting affects the final outcome of a photograph is really important to getting a, a wonderful uh, result. And by that I mean you can fix colors coming in a window, but you can't fix easily without spending hours at the, on the computer the cross lighting that you get in the shadow areas that would be more easily dealt with if you were to color correct the source. The advice I would have for a starting photographer uh, in, in the architectural realm would be to probably get some experience with a seasoned photographer. That would be a great way to learn quickly some of the complexities of interior photography. In addition to that, be sure that you familiarize yourself with the number of tools that are available to you, not only in meters but in Photoshop skills, so that you can integrate them successfully. And I think the experience on location and solving different problems is going to be the best way to grow quickly. I mean, I think it's always brilliant to stay involved with what's going on in the digital world and to have a sound background in color balances and, and light intensities and how that all works for digital photography, since I think we're all talking about digital photography these days.